turn you on. All right. Bob. Turn you on there. All right, good, good. All right, guys, let's try to get started. So, yesterday, what are we talking about? Chemical bonds, specifically. Ionic metallic. Ionic and metallic, right? Now, ionic bonds, it, uh, it's about ions, right? So you have a positive ion negative. and a negative ion. That positive ion had to do what become positive? Lose an electron. Lose an electron. The positive, or the negative had to? Gain an electron. Does that electron go between the two ions? Do they go back and forth? Does that electron go back and forth? No. 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 No, it does not. They do not share electrons. There's no there's no cooperation of electrons. There's no cooperation of valence electrons. There's no covalence going on. But when it does, the electrons do get shared back and forth. It is a type of bond called the covalent bond. Okay, naming, it's a thing. <clears throat> so, covalent bonds. So there's that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Uh, there's an analogy I use, uh, and it, it can be um, uh, not taken in poor taste, right? It's a it's a thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that now. Uh, so there's that. Uh, just uh, just be aware of that. If it uh, if this if this something if this uh, you know upsets you because of personal thing, I'm giving you a warning now. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's that. But it's honestly the best way to describe it. So. All right. You'll see it coming. All right. So these guys share electrons, right? Uh, like up there on the board, CH4, called methane. CH4 has, uh, so how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four, right? How many is it one? Eight. Eight. How many valence electrons does hydrogen have? One. One. How many does it want to get a full first level shell? Not eight. Two. Hydrogen, right? Look at the top row. There's only two, right? So, two, right? <clears throat> Here's the thing. This is an example of, uh, uh, you know, Simon, you got a pack of hot dogs, I got a pack of bun, got a uh, can of chili. We can either, I can either just sit here and eat my bun, you eat your hot dog, and eat it with chili, or we all get it together and make some chili dogs. Okay. So, where everyone, we kind of all share, and we all can have something a little bit better, right? So, that's what's happening here. Uh, carbon will share one of its electrons with hydrogen. Hydrogen's gonna share one of its electrons with carbon, and they're gonna spend part of the time over with hydrogen, and they're gonna spend part of the time over in carbon, okay? Now here's the thing, this is kind of like, a, this, is, this is the analogy here. Uh, think of like divorced parents, where do the kids stay? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a, it's the best way to explain it, and I apologize if someone's going through uh, going through that situation. It's yeah. not a fun situation. I'm in that situation. It's fine. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Uh, uh, yeah. My. Uh, I'll say this. I'm the product of my dad's second marriage, so uh, my older sisters uh, have to go through that, but not me. So it's one of those things where I'm, I want to be nice about it, but honestly, it's the best way. So, uh, it's one of those things where you spend part of the time with one parent, part of the time with another parent. Uh, you go back and forth, right? So, uh, that's the, uh, the situation that this hydrogen and carbon are in. Part of the time, hydrogen has two electrons. It's happy. It's good. It's got those two electrons fulfilling its, uh, its, its shell. Carbon wants eight. So, how many more how many sharing partners does he need? He needs four hydrogens around him. Okay, does that make sense? So that's kind of what these bonds are all about. Now, whenever I'm drawing 
excuse me, whenever I'm drawing uh, atoms, like a hydrogen and a carbon, if I want to show a covalent bond, you're going to see me draw a line between the two. How many electrons is that line? Two. Two electrons are in that line. Okay. And uh, I, I like to, to point this out. Are the electrons actually in this line most of the time? No. This is a this is a something that's a, a misconception that happens often, so I want to just, just say it now. Uh, think about this. I spend a lot of my time at home and a lot of my time at school, right? But uh, the, like saying the electrons are in here, it's kind of like saying that I spend most of my time on the road between here and school. Not true, is it? I mean, that's the path I travel, but it is not where I uh, where I spend most of my time. It's either going to be home or school, okay? Or the electrons going to spend most of their time with the hydrogen or the carbon. All good? We all good there? And then every once in a while they'll they'll hop ship, jump over. One thing uh, one thing to uh, think about is remember electrons are bloody fast. They go move fast. So, when you're thinking about it, they kind of are existing part of the time in all places. Okay. It's just a big blur. All right. We all good so far? We all good with just that's what a covalent bond is. Okay. Now, whenever you're dealing with these shared I'm, I'm getting kind of hot. I'm gonna just take my coat off. Do I have anything in my pockets that I need? Probably I've got a piece of gum. So, um, uh, so, there's that, there's that, anything else I'm doing. And so let me show you some common, some common covalently bonded things, okay? You have methane, CH4, right? Uh, you have water. H2O, NH3, that's another one, NO2, right? sugar, sugar is uh, covalently bonded, that's C6H12O6. Right. Do you see anything kind of familiar with all these guys? What are these guys? Like, where are the elements on the periodic table? They're all over here. What are those things, guys called? Non-metals. There's no metals with these guys. Okay. So if you see a whole bunch of non-metals bonded together, what type of bond is it? Covalent bonded. If you see a metal and a non-metal, ionic. You see two metals? Phallic. There we go. We all good? We good? Good. 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 Let's go. All right. So now, here's the thing. Polar versus nonpolar. This is about the spread of electrons. How often do these electrons hang out at each parent top? Okay. Now, the uh, the typical stereotypical uh, you know sitcom thing is you know the parents are fighting. It's a horrible thing. One parent's going to be like, hey, Jimmy, you wanted an Xbox? You can have three Xboxes at my place. <laughs> right? And then mom's like, I can get you a pony. And then, yeah, they, they go back and forth, right? Okay, here, it's all about attracting the electron. Now, what property of an atom did we learn about that was all about that attracting electrons? Electronegativity. Electronegativity. Okay? So, let's say we have something like, here we have hydrogen and chlorine. Based on that, based on what you know of the periodic trends, which one is more electronegative? Chlorine, right? Chlorine is going to be super electronegative, which means, what's it going to do to those shared electrons? It's going to pull them. It's going to pull them close. Okay? This is like a tug of war between me and the rock. Who's going to win? The rock, right? Exactly. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'll probably just let go and be like, "Hey, you win, but I'm just gonna... So, all the electrons 
are going which way? This way, right? And this is actually how we show some, uh, what's called polarity. Okay? And then kind of let's think about this a little bit more. This is, electrons are going this way, and you kind of draw, you know, like fletching the little uh, feathers. You kind of just make it like a little plus sign on this side. Okay? Because electrons, what charge are they? Negative. Negative. And if all the electrons are hanging out over here, what's this side? Going to be. If all the electrons are hanging out over here, oh. this side is going to be a bit more, a bit more negative, right? A bit more negative on this side. So this little squiggle I drew. Uh, some of you guys uh, probably uh, don't know this because you don't know your Greek alphabet, but this is a lowercase delta. Okay, kind of looks like a D. Do you, do you guys, can you guys squint and kind of see like, oh yeah, that's a D, lowercase D. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Right. So this is what we use when we're talking about slight things, little things, not full, not a full charge. This isn't a full charge like an ion. This is just eh, kind of sort of there, right? A little bit. It's there, but you know, it's not so slight charge. To me, I've always thought it looked more like an S than a D. So I kind of even draw it like an S. So it's a slight charge. Okay. Uh, one way to think about it: how many, people, how many music people out there? Okay, is that a is that a full note or a half note? That's a but but but. Okay, fine. Is it a full note? No, right? It's not a full note. So, there you go. That's the point I'm trying to get around. Yeah. So. So by extension, if one side is slightly negative, the other side is going to be slightly positive, right? This poor hydrogen over here, it, just, it got into this game to share the electrons, and now it's getting chipped, right? Come on. So there's no, there's, it's not, it doesn't have enough electrons most of the time, and it's one little proton there getting kind of, you know, more positive, right? So now we got a positive charge on this side, okay? Positive side, negative side, like a magnet, right? You have a positive side and a negative side of a magnet. Uh, and if you're talking about a magnet, what do you say? Is a positive or a negative length? What are they? Poles. So these are poles, right? So we say this is polar molecule. It's a polar bond because it has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. Think like a north pole, south pole situation, right? So anytime that you have a pole, a positive and negative end, we say it's polar, okay? All right. We all good there? This. <clears throat> um, this phenomenon, this situation, where you have one uh, very electronegative thing pulling electrons away, uh, this is called a dipole moment. Okay. Di, what does di mean? Two. two. Pole, so it makes two poles. Dipole moment. Okay. We all good there? Okay. And this can lead to some shenanigans, some shenanigans going on. Uh, and we'll get to some of the uh, shenanigans later on. Uh, essentially, like, do you, do you think that this is going to show us some properties that these polar molecules have? Probably. Just like the ionic and the metallic kind of get showed us some properties. Same idea here. Okay? All right. But let's go through... And see, like this, we have chlorine bound to another chlorine. Chlorine gas. What do you uh, think about that? Which one's more electronegative? The same, right? They're both the same electronegativity. Uh, so this is where you kind of, all right, they're pulling back and forth. This is tug of war of Dr. Stobie versus Dr. Stobie. We are, huh? You'd like to see that? Sorry. 
really. Yeah. All right. But you go through, they're both pulling back and forth. So where are the electrons hanging out most of the time? Both, right? Not in the middle, but just both sides, right? Uh, so they're hanging out both sides. Is there going to be a negative charge or a positive charge? No. So there's no pole, so we call this non-polar. Okay. So this is a non-polar molecule. All good? All right. There's that. Now, let's go through. Now, what about you had some things like, uh, I don't know, water. This is what water looks like. Okay. Okay, this bond here, this HO bond, OH bond, is that polar or nonpolar? You say polar, right? Why? Yeah, one, you know, the, the, the thing there. What about, what about, uh, let's make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's say phosphorus and oxygen. Is that going to be polar or nonpolar? A lot closer, right? Okay. What about what about a carbon and hydrogen? You think that's polar? Well, here's the thing. Remember, hydrogen is really weird because it's up there, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's actually go through. Go to our favorite website in the world. Uh, let me make sure that I don't have like someone's grade up. P table. You go to electronegativity, and guess what? You can see. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Electronegativity of hydrogen is what? 2.2. I go over to carbon. If I can get there. Carbon. What's the electronegativity of carbon? 2.5. How close is that? Pretty close. So this isn't quite like, you know, Dr. Stobie tug of war with himself. This is like Dr. Stobie you're doing 20s Dr. Stobie, you know, slightly more fit, but still pretty tubby. <laughs> so what does that, what does that look like? We're still going at it, right? Still going back and forth, but not, it's not a full, full blowout. Uh, what about, like I said, uh, phosphorus and oxygen? Woo! 2.19 versus 3.44. This looks a little bit more polar, right? What else did I have up there? Uh, nitrogen, 3.04. 3.44. Not quite, right? That's pretty close together, right? So, uh, if you wanted to get uh, a basic idea, you can kind of follow the periodic trend, right? Where you can be like, okay, oxygen and arsenic. That's going to be polar. They're far apart, right? But nitrogen and oxygen, they're pretty close together. They're probably nonpolar. That's kind of the, the basic idea. If you want a general, general thing. Yes? So, you can go through and actually kind of see what it is. So, chlorine is 3.16, oxygen 3.44, fluorine 3.98. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a um, kind of generality here. Okay. In general, your big electronegative guys, yeah. the guys that are just super electronegative. I mean, like you know, you can be like, okay, who's stronger? Uh, as if you're a nerd, you'd be like, who who can win, Batman or Superman or whatever, right? You have those type of like, those conversations. They're all superheroes, right? Yeah. They're all going. They all can kick my butt, right? We all know that. The superheroes of electronegativity are these guys. This corner. Nitrogen, oxygen, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. Okay, 
Those are your big boys, the big hitters. Okay. The rest, they probably can kick their butts. Okay. So that's a general rule. Okay. But if you don't want the general rule, you say no. I want to know numbers. Okay. Then you're one. You're going to need to know the electronegativity chart that we have up here. I may have to give you an electronegativity chart on an exam. I'm not going to make you memorize these. Don't worry. Okay? That would be ridiculous. Uh, what I can do, though, is the following. Let me move on to the next slide. sharing electrons, and 0.3 is where you start getting some kind of charge difference, a polar thing going. But in truth, like all things in life, everything, this is just on a spectrum, it's not binary. So it's a spectrum. So let me ask you this. If I had something that uh, had a difference of 1.6 and another thing that had was 1.3, or, uh, or uh, 0.7, right? 1.69 versus one, uh, 0.7. Right here and right here, okay? Do you think those two would act exactly the same? Because they're both polar covalent, right? No, they're, they act differently though, right? What about here? What about if I had something here and something here? One's nonpolar and one's polar. Would they act the same or similar? Pretty similar, right? You see what I mean? So that's what I'm talking about, is where there's a spectrum here. You don't worry about like, oh, this is ionic, this is polar covalent. It's much more about just what's the electronegative difference between the two. Um, I'm going to say, though, this is a nice skill to have, but this is by far the slowest way of determining if something is ionic or polar or nonpolar. What's a much faster way? Look at the periodic table, right? If I say magnesium oxide, what is it? Magnesium and oxygen. It's a ionic. Right? If I said, uh, you know, phosphorus and nitrogen, what would you say? Would it be po covalent or ionic? Covalent. Covalent. And then what about polar, nonpolar? Just gut reaction. Yeah, it's either 
non-polar or maybe a little bit polar, right? So, there's that. All good? Kind of get what I'm saying here? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. At this point, uh, we're going to go on after this and talk about properties. Before we go into properties of this, I want you guys to write a summary, paragraph. Oh, I know. But I'm going to be honest, guys. These summaries, are they going to make amazing study guides? Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right? So, prompt, um, how are covalents different than ionics? And um, how are polars different than nonpolars? So, two, two, two ideas you need to explain. I'll give you guys five minutes or so. What was the second part? Uh, polar versus non-polar. Explain polar versus non-polar. Holy crap. Who did this? What? I'm 80. I'm not I'm, I don't know. I prefer things to be like 60. So I'm, I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys Texas or something? Jeez. What? You guys from Texas or something? Anemic. Uh, my wife is from Texas. Texas. Uh, she's from the warm weather where I find my... Like, you think it's
get that back. Okay. So, you guys, uh, you got one of my five word answers? Yes. So, for the first prompt, covalent share electrons, ionic don't. For the second prompt, polar share electrons, or uh, polar force electrons, uh, non polar share. No, I want to try words like both. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's what I was expecting. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think I didn't. I may, uh, if I include it. Alright. Alright, all good? Ready to go? Ready to move on? So now let's talk about some properties of these guys. Okay? So, first off, Let's talk about, I'm going to use water. Water is one of my favorite, favorite things. Um, at least molecule-wise. Right? Yep, yep, yep. Wait, we don't need to practice that. Okay. So, water is one of my favorite molecules. Not necessarily because I can drink water, I should drink more. Uh, I am not one of the hydrohomies. This is water. So, water is water. So, based on that, what side is negative? What side's positive? What side's more electronegative? Oxygen. So up here, we got ourselves a slight negative charge. What about on this hydrogen? Slight positive. Here? Slight positive. So let me, let me say this. We don't have numbers for this, right? We know it's less than one, right? But if we did put numbers to it, what's that negative compared to one of these negatives or positives? So let me ask you this. If this was, a, it's less than one, right? If this was 0.2, this one's going to be 0.2 as well, right? It's the same situation. What's the negative over here going to be? Yeah, this is going to be 0.4. It's going to be twice that amount, right? Because it's pulling electrons not from one hydrogen, but two. And the hydrogens are just getting pulled from one thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, all right. So that's uh, one, one little aside. Okay. Um, so there's that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, water, for example. We have water. This is a slight positive charge. And I draw another water. Negative. Because if you have a glass of water, it's not like there's just one giant hydrogen molecule or a, a water molecule in there, right? There's a bunch. Yeah? More than one. So you're going to need, to show kind of how these work, you need to draw more than one. Now, this side, negative. This side, positive. Anyone see where I'm going with this? What do you see? They'll attract, but it, will they, are they going to attract like an ionic does? Like, what does an ionic have? That's a full charge. This is a slight charge, full charge, tiny charge. So what's the attractive force here? Is it going to be like a full-on ionic bond, or is it going to be just a, a little thing? The way we draw it is these little dashed lines, just to show like it's there, but you know, the thing. Uh, I'm going to use myself. This would be like, you know, like if, uh, you know, ionic bond is like, you know, me and my wife, we hold a walking down the street, holding hands, we're attracted to each other. So strongly that we found ourselves together, right? <laughs> to put it this way, this would be like if a supermodel walked by and I pull one of the, the, the head looks. <laughs> a little attraction, you know? It's a little attraction. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, hey, you know, you know, Chris having to walk by, my wife would turn heads too. So, <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> Chris, uh, my my one of my favorite things was uh, uh it was it was, like, it was a while ago. Uh, this is back when, before Chris Evans turned into Captain America. 
But uh, uh, someone said, man, Tony, you look like great value Chris Evans. And I was like, <laughs> I'll take that. No, <laughs> so, my brother had great value Chris Evans. We were at Universal, um, like my family, and we did like one of those Marvel dinners where they would put that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Wolverine combined with like, he called my brother discount Chris Pratt. And then my dad, my, my brother was like, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those things where you're like, I'll take it. All right, All right but anyway, moving on. So anyways. This is a tiny, tiny attraction, right? But here's the thing about water. This is one, right? What happens if I have a, another water molecule here? Remember, this is two, right? Twice, so it can, it can do it twice, yeah? Now what about, but over here as well, oh wait, we've got another situation over here, right? And then, oh wait, but we can we can keep going with it. There's a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch more, right? You see what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. You ever wonder why water makes like a little, you know, surface tension of water, and you can make a little bubble? Why do you think that is? No, yeah, they're all sticking together just a little bit. Okay, they're all sticking together just a little bit. What type of motion does a liquid have? Rotational and vibrational. So where do these guys go? Simon, you're gonna be the other water. Alright, so what's this? Go, go, closer. Okay, hold it up. Okay. This is like you know a little magnet. We're kind of attracted to one another, right? Bob. Okay. If I if I'm like over here and it pulls me a little closer, right? Here's the thing though. I'm rotating. So, look. 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 The big thing here I want to show is it's it's not like we're just sitting here like this and we're just hanging out like this, right? They're 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 there and then they're gone, right? Just like the supermodel that walks by, they're there and then it's gone as soon as they're out of sight. Hey, we get a chance to check your email. What? Yeah, just when you get a chance. Yeah. You can't say that. You can't say that. Guys, bring it down. Go to down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Guys, if you want to know more, let me know. I'm a fairly transparent person. So, if you, I, I will, but bring it down. Okay. Right, okay. So, um, information you guys need to know. Okay. Pause it. So pause lecture. Boop. Information you guys need to know. Uh, we are going to be going distance learning. Everyone. Okay. I know. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it is, a, a, it is going to be uh, through Thanksgiving break. The plan is to come back November 30th. And start on Monday, back in here. Guys, bring it bring tomorrow. Or not, I mean, Monday. We are not going to be control Monday. So, guys, bring it down. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Okay. So that yes, that means this coming Monday will be distance. This now changes things. One sec. Specifically for this class, we're not going to be doing a lab. I know, but that's fine. Here's the thing. We will just take the lab, pull it back, and we're going to uh, basically Monday the 30th, we'll start the lab. Okay? That's fine. We can do it. You guys uh, basically have gotten, you're going to be getting all the stuff that, I, that you need to get for bonds. Basically, over distance learning, we'll switch to nomenclature. Nomenclature is something that you can learn from home. Okay? I'll, I'll make up some videos, do some assignments. We'll get through it. Basically, we're going to be eating our vegetables twice, and then I'll, we'll have, 
I'll, I'll try and get like more loud drums later. Okay. So, guys, I bring in. I got here. Connor had a question first, then you, then you. Well, like, so the band has a parade. No idea. Yeah. Are we still having Thanksgiving break, or are we doing yes. it throughout it? Okay. No, so it's basically going to be Thanksgiving. Uh, it's going to be uh, distance learning, Until and then Thanksgiving. and then when Thanksgiving break normally would be, basically you're just still going to be at home. Okay. You know. And then after Thanksgiving break, you come back to. Okay, so when you said Thanksgiving break, I thought you were going to have it. That uh, does not mean that you're you don't get your Thanksgiving break. I, I, I mean, if you want, I can. You want me to no. teach through Thanksgiving break? I can do it. Okay. All right. Bring it in, Ashley. Oh, um, are we in sports program? Do you know? No. Okay. Standing in a no idea. No idea. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that that is probably something that you need to talk to your coach about. Um, I'm gonna say this: if if it is uh, if things have gotten so bad that you're not uh, allowed to be in class, the kind of the, the more purpose of school, right? Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that out there, Ali. Uh, so will you be like recording lectures? Yes. Yeah. You like my YouTube lectures? No, I literally watch them every time. I just like get a notification when you post them, I have to go watch them. Yeah, man. Hey, hey. Subscribe, comment, like, ring that bell. <laughs> hey, guys. Bring it in. 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 Yes. How bad it was? No. Basically, guys, bring it in. Basically, from what uh, I'm gonna let you know, kind of what I know. This is not an official channel, um, but I do know that there have been uh, more than a few teachers. So. Once that happens, things start, you know, I mean, if a teacher goes out for two weeks, and honestly, they're like, how many times have I been exposed where you guys would probably have gotten isolated for two weeks and they kept me around? Right? So if they're, if, if you are, if a teacher is doing isolation, it's, it's not like a, a little isolation thing, it's, a, it's an actual thing. Family member, something like that. I think on Wednesday there was like over a hundred thousand cases in one day. <laughs> Guys, bring in. Let's let's uh, for for whatever reason, the pandemic is a very political thing. Yeah. I have I have my own opinions as a trained virologist. You can probably imagine. <laughs> can I argue? You can you can you can probably imagine my my thoughts on it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I am also a, a state employee, which means that I cannot uh, necessarily exercise my political opinion. So I am treading, I am treading, uh, you know, treading water here. Where I'm like, or not treading water. What's the word? Scoop the ice. There's a, there's an aquatic, an aquatic canal <laughs> somewhere. Anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Uh, as far as how bad is it? I, uh, my own personal opinion, we should have shut down long ago. That's, yeah. uh, if we're talking about human life versus uh, being more important than other things, we should have, we should have shut down long ago. That's my personal opinion. Personal opinion, not the, not the opinion of Brooklyn High School or the affiliates. So, um, that's, that's my thing. So, it's that. All right, any other questions before we move on? Yes. For what? I have I have opinions. I have opinions. Now, uh, as far as what numbers, like I have opinions regarding numbers. Okay, uh, comfort. Is there, is there anywhere you think we could look to get like legit numbers? Is there places like oh it's a thousand, oh it's a billion, like is there anywhere that's going to be like, correct? Well. I'm going to say this. Now, if you now obviously, just like any other news source, right? If you if you're going to uh, a right-leaning news source, 
you're going to have right wing candidates. So on and so forth. Now, the best thing you can do is honestly go to nonprofits, right? So by that I mean like WHO is a nonprofit. Uh, even that now is a horrible statement, which is annoying to me. Um, I, I was working with several, uh, so I was a, a postdoc at Penn State at the Center for Infectious Disease Dynamics here in the Ebola outbreak. I know, I know a thing or two about what's going on and the fact that it's politicized this, this, this is very interesting to me, honestly. Um, we should have shut down a long time ago. Personal opinion, not affiliated with President Apple. So anyway, that's, again, I'm done with that. Okay. Now, uh, where to go? That'd be a joke, great. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I know that my mom worked with um, this lady, and vertigo just shut down because 75% of the pop school population was affected by COVID. Oh, again, thank you again. That's now when you say affected by the the see the there's there's always things counter like like that that is affected by. What does that mean? Those? Uh, I would say 75% actually being affected is, is ridiculously high. Now. Affected by it also means like you know isolated exposure and, and things like that. So and you have to, you almost need a freaking PhD in polit political bullcrap to, to navigate these words. But you can do it. It takes a bit of effort. Yeah. Do you know if it's just like the high school or is it like middle school? Or freshman, freshman academy, from what I've read. Freshman, freshman enough. Guys, bring it in. Bring it in. And then that's and that and oh, I'll say this: I'm getting this information from a 30-second skim of an email. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Anyway, any other questions before we move on? We got we got a bit more stuff to do. All good. Yeah. All right. So properties. Do you guys see now why water has surface tension? Yes. Yeah. I can drop water on a penny. Do you know how many waters I can drop on a penny? Water droplets, like. You say 17. Anyone else? You say 20, 26. What's higher? 21. 21. Any other guesses? A thousand's a little too high. Your band 15. I, guys, bring it. I regular on a regular basis can get 70 plus. 70. 70. 70. Yep. How would you do it? But guys, bring it. If you ever wanted to, uh, you know, win a dollar off someone, it's not hard to do, because these uh, these little attractions. The name for this is uh, intermolecular forces. Okay. These intermolecular forces keep water close together. Okay. Now here's the thing. Uh, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, right? That's actually Freaking ridiculous, right? Think about something like alcohol. It boils at like 50. Yeah. Acetone evaporates at room 10, right? Uh, think of acetone like a nail polish remover. Okay. So think about, um, you guys saw hexane back there, right? I showed you hexane yeah. for the chromatography lab. Yeah. 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 Uh, did, it, did, it, did it have as much surface tension as water? No. You guys actually like feel it at all? No. No. no? That's a, a smart thing to do, but hopefully I was kind of hoping someone would. But it's super thin. Uh, the, uh, like a nail polish remover, right? How many uh, of you ladies and guys that wear finger fingernail polish wear uh, have finger polish remover? Um, is it the same like viscosity as water, no. or is it thinner? Right. Thinner. So let me go through and draw out. Uh, acetone. Here's acetone. And all its glory. Now let me ask you this. These carbon-hydrogen bonds, were they polar or non-polar? We talk, no, we talked about it before. Remember, it's like uh, a hydrogen was like 2.2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hydrogen is big, so it's so, non-polar. 
It is nonpolar. Here's the thing. Uh, get, go ahead and just in your mind right now, realize that carbon hydrogen bonds are non nonpolar. Okay? Carbon hydrogen bonds, nonpolar. On nonpolar. Okay. So right there. Okay. So that means nonpolar. 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 Low polar. Do you think this is polar or nonpolar? No, I'm saying, do you think that in general this molecule is gonna act like a nonpolar or a polar? Like a nonpolar, right? So that means they don't have these little attractions keeping it around. Which means is it gonna be as viscous as water? Is it gonna have the same surface tension as water? No. Whenever I'm spinning around, uh, given high magnet high five to justice here, right? Now, eventually, I'm going to be spinning around fast enough. I don't even know where the other magnet went. It's up there on the board. I had a, we had an emergency. <laughs> so I'm spinning around, giving magnet high five. I'm kind of, it's kind of keeping me close by, right? I don't have that translational motion, right? I, but if I spin around fast enough, if, they give, if you give me enough energy by maybe putting a Bunsen burner under me, I start going that faster. Oh, oh, oh. Now I have translational motion. What's translational motion equal? Gas. Gas. That's how you get liquid water to gaseous water, right? So the intermolecular forces cause that. How many intermolecular forces do you have to see here? Oh, I mean, like, uh, how many? These are nonpolar, right? You don't. You don't get the this type of stuff with nonpolar. There's no poles to do that. This is in a lot less, right? So what do you think the melting, the boiling point is to go from liquid to gas? You think it's going to be around 100, or you think it's going to be lower? Lower. 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 How much lower? A lot. lot lower. Acetone boils around 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Not not. 40. I think it's 50. I don't know about Fahrenheit is dead to me. Is it safe to boil? Huh? Is it safe to boil acetone? I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. All right. But anyway, yeah, no, I wouldn't. But anyway, um do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um what do you think about uh do you think nonpolar things? will conduct electricity? No. Why not? What do you need to conduct electricity? Not attraction. You need charge that is moving. Free-flowing charges. Does a nonpolar thing even have charges? You can't have free-flowing charges without any charges. So, uh, what about polars? Yeah, but are they full charges? So how well are they conducting? A little bit. Hey guys, one more thing before you go, okay? So, you know how you can dissolve salt in water? Positive ion, right? What side of water is going to be facing this positive ion? The oxygen, right? The negative. the negative side, right? This is uh, so. How is it that an ionic bond, the strong ionic bond, really close together, really big magnet, can actually be broken apart and dissolved by a bunch of water? These are weak forces. Exactly. It's not just one water molecule. It's an entire army of them. Okay. If this ionic bond was the rock. If 150 Stalker Stobies showed up, could they beat up the rock? 150? A few of them would die. Yeah. I'm going to say, like, 50 of them just jump on, dog pile, and the other 100 just kind of break with one leg. But yeah, you guys see what I mean, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that. A couple things. Once it's dissolved, you get what's called a little shell of waters 
surrounding the ions. That's why they go into water, okay? Will that conduct electricity? Do you have free flowing charges now? Yes. So if you want to really make water conduct electricity, what do you do? Put salt in it. All right. See you guys online.